Today I'm going to deliver from the Lord Jesus Christ a word to the aliens, a word that is addressed to the immigrants. But before I present this word, and it's not really a new word, it is in the Bible, and uh, you can read it for yourself. It is in the book of Jeremiah 29. But before I start with the message, I must read to you the law of social responsibility that we find in Exodus 22 and Exodus 23. Exodus 22 Verse 21, do not mistreat an alien or oppress him, for you were aliens in Egypt. The Lord doesn't want us to mistreat an alien, a foreigner, because this person comes from another country because he's not a native born. Yes, you imagine an alien coming from somewhere. It's not a reason for you to oppress him, to mistreat him. And the Lord said to the Israelites, remember, 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 you two were aliens in Egypt. And he re-emphasized the word in Exodus 23, verse 9. He said again, Do not oppress an alien. You yourself know how, how it feels to be an alien because you were aliens in Egypt. So, the Lord said to the Israelites, you know how it feels. You know how it feels. And I'm talking to you. I know how it feels to be an alien. You come to a foreign country. You do not speak the language. Because you do not speak the language, people think you are dumb. And I remember when I came here, I have a degree in civil engineering, but I find myself not being able to work on that field. And people that I'm working with, when they heard that I'm a civil engineer, they try to make fun of me. How come you are a civil engineer and you work here? Guess what? Because I was an alien, I do not speak the language. I do not know my way. I know how it feels. The Lord said, you know how it feels to be an alien. You imagine they were in Egypt because they were not born in Egypt. They give them the slave job to do. Making bricks. And you know how heavy this thing is. And they make them carry it and beat them. And do not give them a wage. And they do not pay them. You see alien in this country, you know, they get the lowest wage possible. They say, oh yeah, you are an alien. Oh yeah, come over here. I got a job for you. And they give you a job that you cannot even eat. <laughs> With it. <laughs> And they expect you to come back tomorrow. <laughs> so they can exploit you some more. <laughs> so, now we are going to turn the Bible in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. And we are going to read the word of the Lord to the immigrants. The word of the Lord to the aliens. So, once again, the Israelites find themselves being carried away 
in Babylon. They find themselves aliens in Babylon. And I'm, I'm going to show you, because of that word, Jeremiah suffered serious persecution. Even from other prophets. But listen to the word of the Lord Almighty. Let's go chapter verse 4. Jeremiah 29 verse 4. This is what, this is uh, Jeremiah saying, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Guess what? This is a command from the Lord. This is why you see a lot of immigrants, they say to themselves, I have achieved the American dream. I am an alien. I have a house. Yes, because they see some native born do not even have a house. They say, I have a house. And they take pride. You see them out there cutting the grass, you know, put some nice flower bed and, you know, you know, sweep the floor and nice. Because, you know, this is a comment from the Lord. Build houses, settle down. That means stay there. Plant gardens. Oh, yes. You have a little garden in your backyard. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Verse 6. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. So, the Lord tells you, alien, you are going to settle down. You are going to marry there. Yes. You know what is happening sometime in the heart of the alien. They remember the old country. Oh yeah, my country is bad, but I, this is where I was born. I love my country. I feel free. But the Lord said, settle down. Settle down where you are. Marry there. Hallelujah. Marry each other. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Marry. Have sons. Have daughters. That means having children. You are going to have children there. And when your children are old enough, tell them, you know, do not embrace the culture telling them not to get married and go wild out there. Have also sons. Have also daughters. He said, yes, give your son. Allow your son to marry. I allow your daughter to marry there. So that they too may have sons and may have daughters. Don't say, you know, I don't like this country. I'm not going to have kids there. And the next thing you had a crazy lifestyle. He said, increase in number there. Increase in number there where you are. Hallelujah. And we hear so many stories. And uh, sometimes you hear a young couple said, when we came over here, we were only the two of us. We came to America. Now I have 15 grandsons and 17 granddaughters and all that. <laughs> increase in number. Do not decrease. Because when you increase in number, you know, there is power in, where, in the numbers. Amen. Now, you know, if they, think they can take advantage of you, if they, think, if they think they can attack you, <laughs> they open the house and find the grandsons and the granddaughter 
ready to fight for the grandparents. Amen and amen. Verse 7. He said, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I carried you into exile. Yes. You don't say, okay, in my prayers, I'm going to tell hey, God to curse this world. This is a curse country. No, no. He said, pray. He said, seek the peace. You don't go over there and say, yeah, they got my, let me walk there. You know? He said, seek peace with your neighbor. Don't go crazy and now and working around with knives. You know, seek peace. And walk the street like you know you own it. No. Seek peace. Seek prosperity. So an alien should be a peaceful man. A, a prosperous, somebody who is looking to make money every day. To prosper every day. An alien must be prosperity minded and say in your heart. In your head, okay, you know, I'm looking for that prosperity. I'm trying to make my dollar become $10. My $10 become 100 My 100 become a thousand. My thousand become a million. And this is why we have so many alien millionaires now. You know, you know, we have so many Asian millionaires that we know we can't we can even count them. And you know, they, they, they don't know, you know, they're talking to the nation millionaire. <laughs> and you know, it's just, <laughs> stay cool. <laughs> but Haitian millionaires, how would they? I've met so many of them in New York, it's unbelievable. I said, boy, you know, I never knew we had so many Haitian millionaires. Man, yeah, you know, they come to the country without an education, without knowing the language. And now they're flourishing, giving people jobs. They were begging for a job. Now they're giving people jobs. Yes, an alien must be prosperity minded. He said, pray to the Lord for the city. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. As an alien, you cannot be living in a city and pray against the city. Stop that. Oh, they tell me that Orlando is better. Oh, you know, oh, you know, oh, you know, curse that city. I want to go to Orlando. Oh, you know, and, and go crazy like that. Pray for the city where you live. Pray for the prosperity of the city because you live in it. He said, if Prospers, you too will prosper. I met a lady uh, two weeks ago, and she 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 regret that she bought her house in this area. Oh, now I'm losing money. The house, you know, has no value. You know, you know, with an attitude like that, you know, she's not praying for the city where she lives. You must pray for the city. Next thing you will see. A renaissance in the city and your house will build in value. Pray for the city where you live. You know, verse 8 to 10, talking about, uh, you know, certain politics between the prophets. We're not going there. But verse 11, we read, For I know the plans I have for you. God said, I have plans for you, immigrant. I do not have one plan. I have plans. And while I was, you know, meditating on this scripture, and I remember the plans of God for me at every stage of my life. The plan of God when I come to this country with no English. The plan of God when I didn't have a job. The plan of God when I have a job. The plan of God taking me from... Uh, from being working for somebody and becoming a business owner. The plan, the Lord said, I, I know the plans I have for you, alien. You imagine you are an alien right now. You are listening to this, that God has plans to prosper you. 
Do not give up. Because you are doing a bad job now. Guess what? God said, I have a plan for you. For every stage of your journey, God has a plan for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. You hear the plans that God has for you is a plan to prosper you. You are not going to be harmed. If you follow the Lord's coming, you don't have to be afraid. I know. I remember when I moved, I was living in a part of of, uh, of Brooklyn. You know, you wake up in the morning, you see blood. It was like in the late 80s. You see blood. There is a drug dealer that was giving problem in the neighborhood. Next thing you know, you know, they find him in a garbage. He can, his legs up, dead. And I said, oh boy, and I have to wake up 4 a.m. in the morning to go to work. You know, I have to be careful to get the subway. And I was praying in my heart, oh God. Oh, you know, look at, look at those bombs at the corner. And you know, uh, you know, I, I was crossing the street for no reason. I said, "There is a group here. I'm crossing the, the little area. is crossing the street to avoid those uh, <laughs> those crazies out there, those gangs and drug dealers." And I, I frame my way. When you get inside the subway, you you see them out there ready to rob you. And you know, they they don't know. My God has a plan for me. And the next thing I buy a car and I said, I will never take the subway anymore. <laughs> they <laughs> plan to cross for me. Men and men. And I wasn't home. They plan to give me hope and a future. And I said, okay. This month, I got 200 saved. Next month, I'll have another 200. And next thing, you know, and, and I'm multiplying. <laughs> right under their noses. <laughs> they don't know that. Yes. Alien. Stop wasting your money on what it is not bread. Yeah, at that time, I only buy bread with my money. <laughs> and I put and I put put the rest under the mattress somewhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I have a plan to give you a, a future. I have a plan to give you hope. And I remember when I was working, taking the subway, you know, and, and I have a little saving there. And I said, you know what, next thing I'm going to buy my car. <laughs> and I remember I met another Haitian, he was a mechanic. He said, Patrick, how you doing? I said, I need a little car. And he, he sold me a car. You know? I said, I got 500, you know, how much is it? He said, the thousand. He said, Patrick, I know you, I know your mother. Come get the car. And I get the car, bam. <laughs> And I was done with the subway system. Yes, a future. A better life. Verse 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Okay. Listen to this. Yes. Now, you imagine you're an alien. God said you are an alien. When you decide, you said, I need God. Otherwise, you're going to destroy me in this country. He said, then you will come upon me. You will call upon me. You said, oh my God, Kodoyla. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> and come and pray to me. I will listen to you. Do you, do you realize though, this word? You are an alien. God is listening to the alien. Yeah, you are native born with your pride. Or your prejudice and saying, no, or you this, you that color of skin. God doesn't listen to you. You are too proud, too proud for God to listen to you. But he's going to listen to your little neighbor, an alien. And next thing you see the alien, he's buying the whole neighborhood. And you will come to the alien and say, can I, can I wait a room? <laughs> How did that happen? You were in pride worshiping your own self. <laughs> the alien was working and saving money, seeking prosperity, seeking peace and prosperity. People are saying the alien come over here to, 
to, to do crimes. They don't have time to do crimes. They want a little food, food to eat. They want to work to eat. They don't have time for that. Amen? He said, when an alien come to me, when an alien call upon me, I listen. I listen. Are you an alien now without a job? God said, ask me for that job. Ask me for help and I will give you the help. He said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Do you know how many people with prejudice in their little church, they never see a miracle. God never listened to them. They said, you are already blessed and comfortable. You know, you hear there is, they have white church, black church. You are too comfortable in your prejudice. I will not even listen to you and bless you. But the little old alien, <laughs> that is cutting your grass, that you are disrespecting, and yell at. But you know, sometimes it's good for the alien who doesn't even speak English. When they talk bad about it, they said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you, try, you try to curse him, said, yes, 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 yes. And you say, oh my God, I just curse him. He said, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> He's making his money. And you're laughing at him. <laughs> Next thing you know, say, where did you have that money to, to have that nice car? That's like truck. <laughs> Alien love truck. <laughs> they got a big truck. <laughs> yes. He said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And guess what? Alien always seek God with all their heart because they're in misery. They've been humiliated every day. When they come to God, they come with their heart crying. Said, God, you see this guy, you know, I work for him and he refused to pay me. And God said, never steal the money of an alien. <laughs> Otherwise, curse will fall upon your business. Do you, do you know how many aliens ended up owning the job? <laughs> owning the business? <laughs> you know, you know, you know the, the boss used to mistreat. And then at the end, the alien has so much, so much money. The same thing uh, with Jacob. The alien ended up having so much money, he said, you know, I'm going out of business. And the alien has, has some money, he said, you know, why don't you sell it to me? He said, you, you got money to buy. How much you want? Oh, uh, 50,000. And the alien said, okay, here's 50,000 cash. He said, bro, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> Amen. He said, verse 4, I will be fine by, by you. Man, do you know how many people pray in God and never find God? Pray in God and never find God. But the little alien, find God. Find God. I had a testimony of my mother-in-law saying to me, man, when I came to this country, every time I asked God for something, God gave it to me. God gave it. Gave it to me. Yes, because... God heard the prayer of the alien. She said at that time, you know, I was there by myself. I have that goal to bring all my children to the United States. I said, God, I need that money to send in to Haiti to get uh, to help them uh, get the passport, get this, get that. And the next thing you know, she start having everybody coming in. Amen. He said, I will be fine by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Yes, there is a time for you to return to your country. There is a time for that. But God said, while you are living somewhere else, settle down. Settle down. Take your country out of your mind. Have children. And have your children have get married and have children also. And he said, there is a time that he will bring you back from captivity. He said, I will gather you from all the nation and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. We see 
the story of many nations. It's the story of, of, of the Israelites. You know, you go back to the country. Now you are better off. You know, you are well off now. You are able to buy lands and to put people to work, opening business and do serious work of righteousness. To a point you can say, you know, I pay you so well, you don't have to go over there and suffer what I have suffered. Amen and amen. This is the word of the Lord for the alien. God has a plan for the alien. You know, forget about your country when you get here. Work hard. Build houses. Settle down. Plant gardens. Eat what they produce. And marry there. Live there. Pray for the city where you are. Because if the city prosper, you will prosper. And the Lord said, I know and I know when I know the plans that I have for you. It is a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. If you are an alien listening to this word, I want you to go to your room and pray God. And God is saying in his word, when you call upon me, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. An alien should be a man of peace and always be, number one, prosperity minded. Prosperity minded. Try to save your money. Do not enter in the pleasures of this country. Obey God in it and you will prosper. I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen.